Hello, I'm Brian Walker, the curator of The Dog Show. This exhibit was a real treat to put together. So the idea for the exhibit started when the family of Brad Anderson, creator of Marmaduke, gave a large collection of cartoons to the Billy Ireland Museum. And they decided to do an exhibit about cartoon dogs, including Marmaduke. And that was the original inspiration. And Jenny Robb called me in uh, October 2019 and asked me if I'd be willing to curate the show. And I accepted. And uh, the first challenge was putting together a list of all the cartoon dogs I could think of, which included over 150 different names. And then I searched through the uh, database here and came up with over a thousand different examples. And then we boiled that down, list down to about 120 pieces. And I traveled to uh, Columbus in March 2020, by right the beginning of the pandemic. And we sorted through all those original strips and, and cartoons and broke them into different sections, laid them out uh, on, the, on the tables, put them around the floors, took photographs. And then, of course, everything shut down for a year. The exhibit was postponed, and it opened this in June 2021. Uh, so I'm going to give you uh, a little bit of a behind-the-scenes tour of the exhibit, and I hope you enjoy it. The dog show exhibit starts with this cartoon by George Cruikshank from 1820, which certifies the subtitle of the exhibit, Two Centuries of Canine Cartoons. This cartoon depicts the famous saying, reigning cats and dogs, which actually is dated back to as early as 1651. And when this cartoon was done in the early 19th century, that was a fairly popular saying at the time. But it's really a classic uh, cartoon by the great English cartoonist, George Cruikshank. Some of the earliest cartoons in the exhibit are from the 19th century and are political cartoons. One of the things that was common at the time was to depict political figures of the era as dogs. In this cartoon by James Ives, who was the founder of the Courier and Ives Print Company, shows Abraham Lincoln with the Civil War generals from both the Union and Confederate side during the Civil War. In this cartoon from 20 years later, Eugene Zimmerman pictures the iconic Uncle Sam pulling along a bunch of unruly politicians who are caricatured as dogs. In the late 19th century, newspaper comics became popular. And one of the first characters to become a superstar was this little kid who became known as the Yellow Kid. He lived in the, in the lower east side of Manhattan, and in this cartoon, the title is What They Did to the Dog Catcher in Hogan's Alley. They're basically beating him. In 1903, Happy Hooligan, who was a character who was created by Frederick Opera, goes to a dog show with his nephews, and chaos ensues, which is what always happened in that strip. And in this cartoon from William Randolph's Hearst American Weekly, Nell Brinkley, known as the queen of the comics, features her character Golden Eyes and her dog, Uncle Sam. It has a World War I theme uh, where they're over in Europe at the time. Another popular early comic strip was Bringing Up Father by Jordy McManus, which starred Maggie and Jigs, which uh, they were an inspiring uh, couple, Irish couple, who had this little dog which it's probably a poodle, but uh, ends up wandering into Jigs' uh, local saloon and scaring all of his friends. Hilarious episode. This is the first section called Pioneering Pups. One of the most famous of the early cartoon dog characters was Ty, short for Tiger, who's Buster Brown's dog. Buster Brown was a strip that was created by Richard Alcult in 1902. And this really incredible original piece, hand-colored, is from 1903. 
uh, Tiger is an American pit bull terrier, and uh, was a constant companion of Buster Brown. Another early comic strip to start a cartoon dog was George Harriman's Crazy Cat. Officer Puck was a police dog who protected Crazy Cat from the bricks that were hurled by Ignax the Mouse. Chick Young's Blondie featured a dog named Daisy who was adopted for their baby Dumpling who was born in the 1930s. Six years later, Daisy gave birth to five puppies who are still a fixture in the strip today. This wall contains examples by many other early cartoonists from the 20s, 30s, and 40s, including H.T. Webster, Tad Dorgan, Edwin Dunn, and Clifford McBride. The next section features adventurous breeds, cartoon dogs that appeared in adventure and story strips. Probably the most famous dog in this genre is Little Orphan Annie's Sandy. She first teamed up with him in 1925 and has been with him ever since. This special colored piece was done by the creator of Little Orphan Annie, Harold Gray, and he presented it to his friend Milton Kniff, creator of Terry and Pirates and Steve King. Between 1979 and 2000, uh, Leonard starred in an adaptation of Annie that uh, was very popular at the time. This is an example of his original artwork. This section also features Little Lady Rooney, Rusty Riley, and Mark Trail with his dog Andy, and Phantom with his dog Devil, who is actually a wolf. This expansive back wall of the exhibit features a host of classic canines from newspaper comics. That includes Otto from Beetle Bailey, Snoopy from Peanuts, Ruff from Dennis the Menace, of course, Marmaduke, Grimmy, Dogbert from Dilbert, and Old Bullet from Snuffy Smith. Two of the most enduring canines in the classic canine section for Snoopy from Peanuts and Ruff from Dennis the Menace. This early Peanuts strip shows the, the original version of Snoopy, who has a very long snout. The snout got shorter as the years passed. This one's from 1950. This is probably from around the 1970s. These are some figures from my own personal collection, uh, very rare. Vinyl figures from the 1950s of Snoopy and Charlie Brown, the early version of Snoopy, and Dennis the Menace and Ruff. And the original examples of Hank Ketchum's Dennis the Menace. Hank Ketchum was a master of composition in his strips, and Dennis's Ruff was his constant companion. This is an example of We Pals by Maury Turner, who was the first African American cartoonist to be syndicated nationally. His main character's name was Nipper, who wore a Confederate cap, and his dog's name was General Lee. Turner tried to be as inclusive as he could with all of his characters, and he explained that this was an act of forgiveness. One of my favorite sections of, of the exhibit is famous dogs in animation. Of course, because these dogs appeared in uh, the theatrical cartoons and television animation. They're probably the best known of all. We have Goofy from Disney Studio, examples from Disney films like 101 Dalmatians and Lady the Tramp, classic TV stars like Scooby-Doo and others. We put together a video highlight reel of clips spanning the years from 1918 to 2014. That includes classic characters like Betty Boop's Pudgy, Huckleberry Hound, Scooby-Doo, and even Santa's helper from The Simpsons. Here we have miscellaneous mutts, who in most cases are no-name dogs that appeared in a variety of genres, including magazines, comic books, and uh, newspaper comics. Strips. Starting with E. Sims Campbell, 
who was one of the first African-American cartoonists to be published in national magazines like Esquire and Playboy. And of course, George Booth, who so scrawny dogs appear in the pages of the New Yorker and appear there today, are very well known. And Jack Ziegler, who was a fixture in the New Yorker for many, many years. This is a selection of canines and contemporary political cartoons spanning the years from 1978 to 2009. Included here, we have examples by Pulitzer Prize winners Jeff McNelly and Mike Lukovich, as well as cartoons by Dick Wright, Bill Shore, and Rob Rogers. One of the highlights of the exhibit is Lynn Johnson's Death of Farley sequence, and for better or for worse, in which Farley, the family dog, rescues the daughter, April, from drowning in an icy stream. There are 16 strips in this sequence, eight on this side, eight on the other side. And it's a very, very moving story. Another extended story that we feature in the exhibit is from Patrick McDonald's Mutts, in which Earl the dog and Mooch the cat switch personalities in this hilarious 10 strip sequence. In this showcase, we have 27 comic book co covers spanning the years from 1942 to 2019. It includes such classic adventure comics characters as Superman's Crypto and Batman's Ace the, the Bat Hound, but also funny <coughs> canine characters like Augie Doggy, Underdog, and Huckleberry Hound. I hope you've enjoyed this virtual tour of the dog show. And if you want to find out more about this exhibit or the Billy Island, just visit our website.